boost your creativity by making a mood board before starting your project. Go shopping in your own stash and find items that you have forgotten about. Mix and match what you have instead of being overwhelmed with your supplies. Create smaller pieces like tags, journaling cards, pockets or other embellishments and ephemera or even a whole junk journal with the mood board method. Hi there, this is Luise Heinzel from Austria. Thank you very much for joining me today. There seem to be always the same questions when it comes to making junk journal art. No matter if it's a small project like a tag, a journaling card, a pocket or some other embellishment or ephemera or even a whole junk journal, there seem to be always the same questions. How can I start making my project? Where can I find the right mediums and materials that I want to use? I'm totally overwhelmed with what I have in my stash and I can't decide which mediums and materials I want to use for my project. I don't know how to make my junk journal pages cohesive. I don't know how to find this balance and this interesting look of a project. Today I would like to show you a method that can answer all or some of those questions before you start your project so that you have a little boost for your creativity and that you have some ideas before you go to your desk and start with your actual project. So today we are going to create a mood board. So what is a mood board? A mood board is an arrangement of various things that you can put to your desk or wherever you want. You could also put that to your floor or where you have a good view to it. And there can be various things on your desk that help you to see what you have, to um, decide what you want to use and to give you a little limit of your supplies and your materials and in my eyes that can be really really helpful to find those special things that you want to put into your project and to get started to come into this project of actually creating something. For the mood board for today I would like to use this paper here as my starting point. This comes from my digital printable paper collection that's called Grungy Fairies. This is from the Grungy Fairies junk journal pages that you can find in my Etsy shop. The link is down below in the description box, but of course you can also use any other paper. Choose something that you like. Choose something that has your attention. That can be, of course, a paper that has an image, a focal point, an animal, in this case a fairy, something interesting. But it doesn't have to be such a concrete thing. You can also choose a starting point that has something really abstract on it. Uh, please mm, try to find out which type of creator you are. Do you know what I mean? I mean, you know if you are um, the the person who likes those concrete things or if you are the person who likes more abstract things. Choose what you want as a starting point. <clears throat> and then um, try to bring that to a really, really small piece. I mean, this page is relatively big, as you can see. And here is going on on very very much and that's what i mean with the page is big i mean this is dna4 it's dna4 it's not so big but do you know what i mean here's the fairy there are some mushrooms this owl the fish and here's going on very very much on this page and to focus our creativity to one thing it's very helpful to choose only a part of the picture to create this mood board I have decided that I want to go with the fairy today, so I have made something here. So I have cut out the fairy from the page. So as you can see, 
This is exactly the same thing here, the same uh, paper. I've just cut the paper here so that I can get rid of this. I mean, only for the moment, only for my eye. Yeah, I will put this away so that I'm left with this image here. Um, and I have put this white frame here around the image. I've just backed my printable page here, this cut from the printable page, with some white paper so that I have this frame around here. When I place this to my table now, then you can see it um, pops out from the surface where I have put it to. Uh, we will put many things around this image later and to yeah, give your eye a point where it can go to, it's really helpful to have a frame around this image. And it's also helpful uh, when you choose a place where you want to build up your mood board that is relatively neutral. As you can see, I'm not on my craft desk today. Um, that has two reasons. The first reason is that this um, desk here is relatively neutral, a little bit darker, very calm, so that my eye can't get confused by the surface of the table when I put the other things around. And the second thing is, and that uh, is also something that I would like to recommend, choose a place where you can uh, arrange your mood board that is not your craft desk, because you will need the space on your craft desk later, of course, to create your actual project. Uh, choose a place where you can let this lay for a few days or even weeks where it is not in the way for your actual craft project. Using this part of the printable as our starting point, we want to arrange different things around this image. And I think the most easiest thing is to begin with your absolutely favorite things. That can be favorite papers, favorite mediums, favorite favorite lace, favorite fabric, favorite die cuts or whatever. So choose your absolutely favorite thing that you want to use in your project and that you are familiar with. It's really, really good to have something in the very beginning, right after cutting this, um, that you know and where you know how you use it and um, you have no... Um, strange feeling with that what you are choosing in this step so for me um that is distress oxide ink i love using distress oxide inks and uh, because of that i have chosen um to start with these inks but of course this step can be a different one for you if you think oh i have papers where I think they matched this thing, then start with the papers. If you have acrylic paint and you think, oh, that would fit really, really well, then start with the acrylic paint. But I have to choose a starting point here, so I've decided to go with the Distress Oxide inks. But please, you can change the order of building this up like you want it and like you feel comfortable with it. So um, the first thing that goes to my eye are the colors of the hair of this fairy. We have a really rusty, orangey, reddish brown here um, in the hair and also in some other areas of the image. So I think that it's a good idea to start with Distress Oxide Ink Vintage Photo. And perhaps you're wondering why this is so far away, why I have my camera so uh, high above the image. Um, I've made that because... Um, of the fact that you can look from the top to your image. Don't go to your image too close with your eye. Um, that's what I'm trying to realize for this video as well, so that you have a little distance to the image, so that you don't see, ooh, here is perhaps a little bit white, and then there's a really reddish red, and uh, for example, next to it there's a gray, and you, you see all of these tiny details. The first thing that we want to focus on are the main colors on this image and the main things that we can see. And we can see that better when we have a little distance to the image that is laying on the desk. And that's the reason why the image is so small in the camera frame, because I'm trying to do, yeah, to imitate the reality in this video. <laughs> Hopefully that makes sense. So 
back to vintage photo i think that this is the perfect color but perhaps you are not so sure then of course you can what is that <laughs> of course you can um take a little piece of paper i have this ring uh binder thingy here these are really really good for making some swatches so next i'm taking uh, just a finger sponge and i'm applying some of my vintage photo ink here to this thing Okay, so I'm leaving a little space here that is white so that we can spritz a little bit of water to see uh, the, the reaction of the oxide ink. But first, if I do that, I check if this will fit uh, to the area of the image that I have chosen. And this is relatively good, I would say. So I will take this off. <clears throat> then I'm taking a little bit of water then I'm um, trying to let this run to the white area so that I can see that better, like this. Don't touch it, Louisa. <laughs> then let's place this here as our first color that would match this thing. And I'm also placing my Distress Oxide ink pad here. Perhaps later on the whole thing would make more sense to you. I would like to go to the next color now before I explain why I am putting the ink pad to my mood board as well. So um, another color that we could use here is, I guess, walnut stain distress oxide ink in this corner here and also here and in this area of the hair. We have some walnut stain and I guess here as well. Uh, I'm talking in those colors because I like to use the Distress Oxide inks. Of course, you can also choose the names of your acrylic paints or something like that, but for me, it's easier to do it like this. So I will I will make another little piece of paper with the Walnut Stain ink in the same way like I've done it before with the Vintage Photo. And for me, um, it's also really helpful when I put my um, little finger sponges directly there where I have used them. So as you can see now, uh, do you see that? Now it makes a little bit more sense. This was vintage photo and this was walnut stain. And now I'm going on with some colors where I think that they also match to this image here. Um, another color would be frayed burlap. Here in the uh, in the background, um, there's some I think frayed burlap. <laughs> Let's see of, of if that is correct. This is such a great color. I love this color. Oh my goodness! And the frayed burlap distress oxide ink reacts relatively extremely i would say of course it's depending on the paper where you use it but for me the reaction of the frayed burlap is one of the most wonderful reactions that the distress oxide line has um we have some gray some kind of a <sighs> greenish gray i would say it's a little bit a touch of turquoise in this gray and we have this gorgeous uh color that has that is the base of this ink and i guess and of course that's no happy accident in this case i guess that i have chosen the right color for the background here in the printable because when i made the printable i've thought about freight burlap when i made the background so that's no coincidence or something like that i've thought about that that's for me, of course, now a little bit easier to choose the right colors than it would be for you when you see the printable. But if you have the printable and if you want to use it here, Freight Burlap would be a very, very great addition to this uh, background. And I'm a little bit proud of myself that I could reach this color here in the background. We have this gray here. We have a little bit of this turquoise thingy and this greenish color that is in the Freight Burlap as well. Um, 
And of course, it depends a little bit on the printer and the paper that you use to print such a printable. So if you try to um, imitate exactly what I'm doing in this video, please don't be confused uh, when you don't see exactly that color in your print. Because it can be that your printer prints out your um, file a little bit different than you see it here in my camera. But um, of course, you can vary with the um, colors that you have and you don't have to use oxide inks of course um, these mushrooms what is that I mean <laughs> the that color is relatively strange I would say um, but let's try brushed corduroy for that I know that brushed corduroy is a little bit not so bam me <laughs> it's not so orangey like the mushrooms but perhaps we can get a color that is in there and i am already a little bit happy because i guess that this would match really really well look at that uh -huh. <laughs> sometimes i'm a little bit proud of myself so let's spritz it with with water you can see now we get this more intense color here but when this is dry of course that will change a little bit but you can always go over this with uh, some mediums later to reach the original color of this and it's not so important that you have exactly this color i mean we are junk journaler we want to make art we want, don't want to stress ourselves but we want to have colors that would go well with the rest and when we have the rest here you will see that it is not so extremely ex important that you have exactly the same color okay so uh, then <laughs> i want to have some gray as well so i think uh, we need some some black and some gray for that i've chosen black suit and hickory smoke I would say this is our color range for this mood board. So I'm placing the sponge here as well. And now I want to find a place where I can put my Distress Oxide ink pads because this is nice. I have my colors here, but the ink pads um, take much space on my table. I don't uh, have the nerves to, <laughs> to handle that. So I will go here. To, um, and I, now I have to check my screen, sorry. I will go here to the very edge of my table so that I can see this here and that it is part of my mood board later. But it is uh, now not uh, yeah, taking so much of my attention. But I want to have it here. And I think mm, it's strange. But having your supplies, I meaning... Having the, the, the ink pad here can also be part of your um, emotion for the project. It can also be part of your uh, of finding your ideas. Um, finding a nice arrangement for your craft supplies can also be a part of your inspirational process. This can, of course, change later, but I'm trying to get some kind of an an order here to my table so um, since we have the distress oxide inks uh, we can start um, thinking about what else do we have that would go well with the oxide inks that can be the normal distress inks i have a problem i have only the distress oxide inks i don't have the normal ink pads i don't know why but <laughs> It's a fact. I don't have them, but let's uh, think about what else could go with that. So I am just thinking about embossing powder and embossing glaze. So I have, and of course I'm choosing the colors that I have here now. I have frayed burlap embossing powder. I have brushed corduroy embossing powder. I have um, a vintage photo and walnut stain uh, embossing glaze. So I don't have these both uh, in my stash, but I have that. So I'm using what I have. 
Um, and no matter if this is embossing powder or embossing glaze, why not mixing that up? Um, so try to find those things that you have that can be combined with what you had before. And that's your next step. Now we have talked about the things that we like to use and that we have and that we are familiar with. But what about those things that we've bought new and that are, I would say, mediums as well? So I have these three thingies here and I've never used them before. Uh, I have bought them a few weeks ago on a craft fair. These are from Viva and they are called 3D stamp and paper paint. So you can make 3D stamping with that. I don't want to go into a new stamping method for myself. I, I don't want to do that. But I bought these because they look really, really interesting. And of course, you can use them as normal paint as well. So let's see. So I have chosen these three because I guess that these could work. So let's try to uh, make a swatch of these as well and see if that would work. So we could include um, a medium that we haven't used and that, that we have in our stash into our project by just taking it and trying it out if that will work. I'm not sure. I guess so we have to take this out of the way otherwise the green is too much for the eye. But let's let's check this. When we put that here and we see the rest of the colors especially our swatches here can that color go into this row or not? Do we have this color here or not? I think I thought that this comes out a little bit more like frayed burlap, like this color here. But as you can see, that doesn't fit. That is way too green. It is way too extreme. So let's not go with that. So we will put that away and try out these both colors here. They are from the same brand. So I will just um, make some swatches of those. <laughs> okay, so that is very interesting. I'm not so the fan of glitter. You know that. <laughs> if you know my channel, you know that. But these both colors are surprising me. Really, I'm a little bit speechless. There's a silvery little thingies in there. These look really, really cool. And I think it's not too much um, for... For the rest, I mean, this orange here, yeah, it is some kind of a contrast to, to this because it's not so reddish, it's more orange, but it's a color between the mushrooms and the hair. And this brown, I would say, is some kind of walnut stainish. Okay, so I would say these are enough wet mediums for the moment of course you can add more like you wish later but let's perhaps talk about some papers because we are paper crafter we want to make something with paper so let's talk about what we can add to the mood board that comes from our paper st stash so i have um, taken out some things here because i guess that this is uh, the most time consuming step for this mood board thingy that we are doing here. So I have already prepared something um, and I would like to explain you how I have chosen those things. So let's start from the bottom. <laughs> I, I, I want to start from the bottom today. So I have this here. So this is a paper bag, as you can see, and this is a really neutral color. We have relatively much neutral colors here um, so I would say this would match relatively well and here I'm not trying to find exactly one of these colors that are in the paper but I'm trying to find something that is a little bit different but matches the colors here as well so let's place this perhaps here where we have enough space on our table where we can put it and we can see that this color goes really well into the rest that we have here. And now I'm trying to um, look with my eye in a way that I can see everything that I have on my desk here. Yeah, I'm not 
looking only to the picture but I'm looking to this and I can also take my paper that I have here and put it here and I see oh that matches really really well I can put that next to my embossing powders and glazes and I can see oh that fits really well and when I decide that I want to use it I uh, place it somewhere on my table Another thing that we also can use, of course, are book pages. So I have this one here. I guess that this comes from uh, some kind of a children's book or something like that. And this page fits really well in my eyes. This is some kind of a greenish color. I like the tree here that goes really well with the background. We have these leaves here. And you can now also, of course, <clears throat> think a little bit about the theme um, of what you have here that you have chosen for your starting point. Fairies, leaves, tree, fairy, uh, forest or something like that would match really well. I also love this torn edge here. A neutral paper like this would also work, I would say. Um, then I have this coffee dyed envelope. Um, I think something that is not... Um, only a piece of paper is really interesting. So envelopes, paper bags, or um, some other pre-made um, things that you have would work really well. You could use some um, tiny file folders or whatever you have in your stash. So let's place that, for example, here. And now I'm also trying to get rid of this surface of my table. So I'm trying to fill up my space that I have here with those, let's say, little bit bigger pieces of paper. Um, if you think, okay, I'm a really big fan of these index cards that have this little tab here, or I'm a really big fan of envelopes. I'm a really big fan of those tiny cards. And I want to include those into my project and not only one, but several of those. Um, for the mood board, we are choosing only one of these pieces. Yeah. So when I have an envelope, I have only one envelope on my mood board. If I use 10 envelopes uh, in my journal later, uh, that I can decide later how many envelopes I would like to use. If I have one book page, then I have this one book page here on my table. Um, of course, we will perhaps use more than one book pages when we make a whole junk journal, but those we can choose later. This is only something where you have one piece of the things that you want to use. Because uh, otherwise, this would be overwhelming as well. I mean, if you put um, 20 book pages here, because you need 20 book pages for your junk journal later, then that would be way too much for your eye. One of these cards can remind you later to take out more of these cards, because if one card works, then 10 cards would work of, uh, as well, of course. Okay, so then I have these both paper pads. Uh, these were gifts as well. And this is made um, really cool because here, in here, there are several different papers, as you can see. So um, this is good for me because um, here I have more choice of from different things. I mean, if I go to my box of brown papers, then... I will, would probably find the things that I've already laid down here, but I would perhaps not find something like this. It depends on the order that you have in your craft room, of course, what would work and what not. I don't know how you have uh, organized your craft supplies. And um, I can recommend to take out really, really different things. I mean, if you think, oh, I have a book that has some trees in it. Take that, because trees would work relatively well here, I would say. If you have a book that has birds uh, and you think, oh, perhaps there are birds in the same color range, take the bird book out and look what you have there. Um, if you think, oh, coffee dyed um, book pages with small uh, writing on top, that's great. Take that. Um, try to find really, really different things. That will not work. <laughs> Definitely not. What about this? Boo. That's that's a strange thing. But that's what I mean. I mean, this is something that I would probably haven't chosen um, with thinking about it. 
Now, when I have that here and I can compare what I have here already and what is here, then I can decide if I want to use it or not. Um, and, yeah, if I'm not sure, <laughs> what can I do if I'm not sure? I can take this and put it here. And perhaps I think, ooh, that is relatively massive. I mean, if you look at the whole arrangement now, you see that this is coming out. It is in competition with this and um yeah but i don't want to give up <laughs> with this pattern so let's try to make that a little bit smaller and put that here what do you think now <laughs> i think it's a totally different world now now it it matches the colors are relatively uh nice to each other and when this is smaller i think it fits really well in here so try to vary with the size of the things that you have um that you want to put here i mean if we put this small amount of paper here we know that we perhaps later on when we create the junk journal we put one page of this pattern into the journal or we make one background where a little piece of this is and the rest is in other colors and other patterns but we won't forget about this uh, when we put that here. Okay, so what about what about this? I mean, look at this. That is great, and that would fit to the background here as well. And now you perhaps think, okay, when I uh, to put this away, that I want to use something like this, and I don't have more of this in my stash, what can I do with this? <clears throat> I mean, using this small piece, okay, but if you want to make a whole junk journal, then this could be probably not enough of the same pattern of the same material of the same colors but if you have this on your mood board you can take this as the next starting point to find more things like this i could take this and go shopping in my own stash to find similar patterns similar colors similar material like this is uh, but when this goes back to your shelf then you have no chance to remember that. I think here it looks really great. And I'm also trying to layer the things a little bit here. That's not good. Um, we have to find another place for this first, I guess. Um, I think we need a little bit more space. I, I want to find a new, uh, new place for this and for these both pieces, even if I like them being here. And that can also be a thing, um, a point where you think, okay, I need more space. I have several pieces here, but I need more space. Then just make your space a little bit bigger. And that's uh, the space for your mood board, I mean. Um, that's the reason why I have said, choose a place where you have enough room for making that. So uh, I can do a little trick. I can just zoom out a little bit. So my uh, table now is seems to be bigger of course you have to think about that before you start 
<laughs> for me it's relatively easy but uh, of course you have to think about that be before you start choose a place that is big enough so that you can expand to the sides if you have the situation like i have here and you have not enough space and besides to the bigger pieces of paper that you have for example the book pages or the paperback or something like that of course we can also choose smaller ephemera that we have in our stash we could always um, go through our stash and look what do we have stickers labels um, tiny pieces of original ephemera or something like that no matter what it is so um I went through my stash and I found some things. So, for example, little tags. Then I have this little thingy here. Then I have some tiny labels and some tiny bits and pieces, like this number here, for example. This comes from a ledger book. And then we have little labels in different sizes and with different uh yeah some ledger on top and this ticket here for example i think fits really well i have these tiny things here so i will arrange these here like i like them and i'm trying to get a nice arrangement for these now so i want to boost my inspiration as i said so i'm trying to think like i would glue that down yeah <laughs> so how would i place that to my project if I want to glue it down and I am trying to arrange it in exactly that way. I am trying to imagine that I have to glue this down and I put that here, uh, yeah, like I would glue it exactly like that. And I think now <clears throat> we can think about some fabric, some lace and all of this fluffy materials. We have here until this point much uh, paper and things that have yeah a really flat character and that are made out of paper or something similar. So let's think about some lace and some fabric. Or perhaps also some wool or something that, like that. what else do I have here um, we need more fabric and more lace and that stuff um, I have these flowers I am no, ooh, I'm not totally sure if this is paper or fabric that feels like paper but it looks like fabric it's a little bit strange but these are perfect these are just perfect I think it's clear why isn't it <laughs> so let's try to find a position I think here it's really great Let's see, we have one flower here, one here, one there, and the other one there. So perhaps, oh, here's another one. Perhaps like this. Why not? Okay, then I have also two of these ginkgo leaves. Um, sometimes when I see, I mean, that is not fabric and not lace, isn't it? Um, sometimes when I see a flower, 
then my associations go a little bit into another direction, even if the next thing that I want to choose is not made out, out of the same material. This is a leaf from a tree, of course. It's no fabric and no lace, but why not? Taking this idea, we have the flower here and those leaves perhaps are laying somewhere in your room and you see them, you think, oh, the color is very great. The theme would fit perfectly to the fairies. And by the way, the skirt of this fairy is also made out of some digital ginkgo leaves. I think you can't see that from this distance now, but please believe me, <laughs> those are some watercolor ginkgo leaves where I've made the skirt from. And why not using these? I think that would be just perfect. Um, I don't know if we need both, but let's see. The green one would fit, I think, a little bit better. And I'm also not sure because... Hmm. Why do we need both of these? I mean, that's only an aesthetic thing, isn't it? We have the inspiration from this flower. So why do we need this? That's totally not necessary. Don't waste your space, Louisa. Uh, and that's the reason why we only will use one of the ginkgo leaves as well. So let's take this one where the green is. Um, and let's place that somewhere. So I guess we could add some miscellaneous pieces. Um, I'm thinking about structure now. I'm thinking about patterns. I think I'm thinking about really unusual things that can give us some more inspiration. So let me show you what I found. I have this wooden piece that is normally meant to use as a Christmas decoration. As you can see, there's this little star in the middle. And I've used that to try some stamping with watercolor. And because of that, this thing is brown and it looks really, really distressed and really vintage in my eyes. And it would fit perfectly to this theme. For me, it's a fact. So let's try to bring that somewhere. And ooh, I guess I have found the right position. It's exactly here. And now we can also start to build up more and more layers. I mean, the flower and this thing would give us an idea um, for a little embellishment, for example. You could make a cluster out of this. You could use these both pieces in the next steps exactly like they are here in your mood board. But um, you can also make um, something that's pleasing for your eye um, and try to arrange that um, as I said, um, imagine that you would glue it down. And of course, you could also go outside or to a totally different place than your craft room to find some things that can make your mood board interesting and that can boost your inspiration. So for me today... It's this little thing here that um, I have just found outside and I want to put this ooh, somewhere here to my mood board even if I know that I perhaps can't include that into my journal later. But it's the same thing as I said before. Why not taking some things that give us inspiration? I mean, this thing, the texture of this, um, can give me ideas for something else in my journal. I can look at these little things, at the colors, at the structure, at the, at the pattern and the shape and that stuff. And this can give me inspiration for doodling, for watercolor or for whatever. So if it um, is not here and I can't see it, I can't get the inspiration from it. So uh, yeah, that's the reason why I'm placing it here or somewhere here because I think there's not the right place. But perhaps perhaps somewhere here. A little bit too much here. The more you have on your table, of course, the more difficult it gets, but that's okay. Take your time. Take the time you need to do this. And even if you have that later and you would rearrange everything, that's totally okay. And uh, that's part of the process, of course, as well. Another thing that I have here is this little stone here, or it's not so little, but <laughs> this stone here that has this dried moss on top. And now I have a problem. 
oh my goodness it, it has just sprinkled a little bit of this thing to my thing okay so uh go on louisa <laughs> don't freak out i want to put the stone somewhere here and this is this yellowish color as well so uh, we have talked about this 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 and this so i guess the stone has to go somewhere here but where perhaps even here and uh, i mean i have a really really big collection of buttons why are here no buttons i don't know i will go and search for some buttons that would match this whole thing okay so here are some buttons i have taken out different sizes different colors where i think that they can match to this whole arrangement so let's see where we can put those and now i will just um, place them somewhere uh, where i think that it can look nice and this is also the point where i try to let's say dress this whole thing up a little bit so this is my playing time do you know what i mean i want to have a really really nice arrangement um, and I want to break down some lines here so that it is pleasing for the eye. I want to have something that looks really, really beautiful so that I later uh, later on can look at this and I can say, okay, so this is my inspiration. This and nothing else. I um, don't want to be confused about the things that are still in my stash. I don't uh, want to be confused by thinking about ooh, what else can I use I want to have this and nothing else so that I yeah that I am not overloaded with all the things that I probably have in my stash have in a box or somewhere else and perhaps you think um, she said we shall use only one piece of the things that we have chosen. So, for example, we have uh, put away the second of these paper flowers here. We have used only one of those index cards, for example, or only one of these little cards with the botanicals or something like that. And now I'm using more than one button that can be confusing for you. I know. <laughs> but in this stage, I'm trying to mm, make this yeah artsy do you know what i mean so now i can i have my ooh, i have my base i have all of this uh, those things here i have my base and um, now i can play around and put the things down that i want to use here and especially with those tiny things um, i think it's really helpful to place them here and there because now you can play around and you can find different variations of miscellaneous things so not only buttons would be possible we could also use of course some letters or something like that i have these wooden letters here some things that you perhaps have in your stash and use not so often so for me those wooden letters are such an item i have them i love them but sometimes i forget about them and when you now take those things out um, and place them here then you will not forget them in the next steps, in my next videos, I will show you how to use all of this stuff that we have on the table here to use some, uh, to create some embellishments, to create junk journal pages and to use them in your actual project. And that's why I'm, um, yeah, let's say overloading this thing here a little bit now <clears throat> so that I can um, see what I have. I mean, this is a small amount of my stash, of course, but... Uh, if I don't take it out and don't lay it to my table, then I won't see it and I probably won't use it. So, yeah, that's the reason why I'm doing it like that. And what I also like to put here now are some quotes. I have chosen some quotes where I think that they can fit here. I will cut that, uh, of course, here, so it looks a little bit weird. And then I will place that here and there as well. And I will also search for some things that um, I can't bring into my journal. We have talked about this stone and this little botanical here. Of course, I can't put the stone into my journal or to my project, but it can help me to find inspiration, to find texture and that stuff. And um, I will also put this thing here. 
to my mood board because um yeah it fits the colors fit i have to cut that of course but i think this is a really great addition look at this this is so cool and i want to have that here for my eye to find ideas what i can do with things later that have a similar uh, look like this Okay, so that's it. I will stop for now. Um, of course, I can always rearrange things. I can change things that I don't like here. But for now, I will stop this. And if this isn't a great starting point for your creativity, I can't help you. <laughs> so I'm hoping that you can already see some things here that we can make out of this. I mean, look at all of these little arrangements here and there um, that are part of this whole thing. Uh, I can imagine a journaling card from these things here. I can imagine a hidden paper clip made out of this. Or, for example, a belly band out of the buttons here and this um, textured thing underneath. Uh, there can be made so many things with the help of this mood board now. Um, in my next videos, I would like to show you how to split the single areas here and use those materials that we have in the uh, single areas to create some tags, some journaling cards, some pockets, some other embellishments for your junk journals. And that will go into a whole junk journal later. So if you want to know how to go on with such a mood board, then please stay tuned, subscribe to my channel, watch my future videos. I think this will become a very great adventure. <laughs> and if you want to have exactly this as an inspiration, then please visit my Instagram that is linked down below in the description box for you. There I will post a photo of this so that you can save that to your phone or to your computer or you can print that out so that you have exactly what I have here on my desk. I think that's easier than watching the video over and over again. Of course, you can do that as well. That would be, of course, very great. But um, you can print that out and use that for your own mood board that you perhaps want to create now after you have watched this. Um, yeah, so that's it. I will let this here uh, laying on my table and in my next videos, you will see how we will use that. <sighs> I'm happy with that. And I'm hoping that you will be happy with your mood board as well. So see you the next time. Bye bye.